So, um, yeah, good morning, good evening, good afternoon. Uh, welcome back uh, to Canon Fodder, the channel for Arsenal fans all over this world. We're back in European um, Cup action. And um, no doubt you recognize who this person is. If you don't know who this is, James. James, my friend, how have you been? Very well, thank you, Alex. It's lovely to be back on again discussing our European escapade. Yeah. The uh, interesting group, uh, difficult away days in particular, and it's, um, it's uh, almost 30 years since our last European triumph, so it's high time fans that might recognise me might think I'm going through the motions again saying the same things, but this represents a great opportunity, and um, for all the people, for all the talk of champions, let's try to get get back and win to winning ways in Europe and have a bit of pedigree to go in the league before it gets completely revamped. Yeah. And it's a super league in everything but name. If way if we're gonna win the Champions League like everybody thought we was going to, we have to win it next year and then it, the the fairy tale will be complete. But uh, we'll be up there. we can only try our best. Yeah, absolutely. But James, can I ask you a very quick question about you know um, the game against Man United? Or yeah. Yeah, what are your thoughts? What you think about the game? Well, first and fortunate, fortunate enough to be at the games at home to Aston Villa and at home to Fulham. Both games could have been as delighted as people are with the both victories. Both games could have well been a draw, you know, considering these. And I think let's um. Arsenal fans, particularly the younger generation, they, they like to get carried away. Um, and, you know, wanting to run before they can walk. Obviously, Eric Ten Hag was uh, uh, that they signed for, from Ajax for 100 million euros. Uh, scored his goal and um, played. And uh, it's just something that um, we've got to accept. But it's a long old season, and I think fans, a football yeah. season actually is. You know, and we've got to uh, embrace it as well. We're fighting on uh, traditionally, mm. and uh, you're not out of any of them yet. But you can only take things one at a time. Uh, we've got to try to to win a trophy this year, Alex. You know, if we don't win a trophy this year, four years without a trophy, and uh, we don't want to be staring down that barrel. We want to be uh, um, to win trophies on a regular basis. Yeah, okay. Well, as I said, I've got James Rowe here, and we're going to be talking. Well, actually, James is going to be talking about the fixtures. Uh, we're back in uh, the European League action uh, this Thursday. So, James, um, where do you want to start? Well, first and foremost, I thought we before going on to discuss the first away game in, in Zurich, which will actually be actually Gallen, which is an hour away from, from Zurich using public transport because the stadium of Zurich a music event, so we'll be playing in a different stadium. And the group of um, so, um, Norwegian champions, PSV, who came very close in the, um, in the Champions League qualifier, Zurich, who are um, Swiss uh, champions as well. They have a, a great manager in Franco Foda, a member managed their national team. They have... Uh, Bledim uh, Shimali as well is a an half got a kick on him and uh, he's a great set piece taker. So we haven't got as easy as we've got, especially away from home in the stadium. So in this case, St. Gallen on first evening to Bodo Klimt in Bodo in Norway, which only holds eight and a half thousand. And Philip uh, Philip Stadion in, in Eindhoven. So um a very interesting European draw, but forget that the dynamics of this competition has changed, Alex. It's no longer the top two go through. Now, if you win your group, you go all the way through automatically to the last 16. You play a Champions League dropout with the second leg away from home. And if you finish first, and um, and if you finish bottom, you're out of European competition. So the dynamic is completely Changed. We've been away. So much has changed within Europe. Um, I've been saying for years, apart from 
involved in football. And the gap between the seasoned European teams and the um, and the speak is only get is only decreasing year on year. So I hope that we play our best team in all respect to all opponents, and I hope we try to win six games out of six. Hmm. Um, you know, I know we, again we haven't kicked a ball yet in anger in in Europe just yet, but um, uh, is this? Is this squad better prepared to make a good old go of it in the Europa League, James? Or... I think attitude is the key word, Alex. I'm I'm really intrigued if they'll get on in European competition. I know a few Arsenal fans think that he won't even play to prove as a goalkeeper and he has ambitions of it being England's number one. He needs to be confronted with Europe. There are some really good teams in this um, in this tournament, so should that Betis, uh, for example, that are very good football teams. And uh, then you've got to think of the Champions League dropouts. You know, that by I mean at Barcelona or Inter will, will drop down, and um, other groups as well. Um, Frankfurt, Marseille, and Sporting Lisbon will drop down. You know, there's going to be teams dropping um, very difficult to face and um, in you know, European football it's always been the top on which you measure yourself in terms of progression as a club and I, I get the impression that having been in the Champions League for 25 years people just took it for granted as if part of trying to win the thing which I found quite disheartening I would often prioritise for the years and I didn't enjoy seeing this lose to um, Bayern Munich getting a foot thousand and thirteen getting beat by a very 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 good um, Monaco side into for as bad as we were that night they were excellent and players such as Berbatov super Sco, and then obviously Ostersons in 2000 and um, in 2000 um, we defeated by Ostersons 2-1 at, at home. I, I interviewed Graham Potter shortly after saying that the Derby defeat by Spurs in the run-up to that, that game, they knew that Arsenal was going to. They had their chances and they took their chances. I remember that um, that wonderful um, reaching the final where um, I attended all, all but two home games, missing only two in the semi-final, but attending the rest. And to see us beat Napoli and and Ren toe to toe with a very physical sporting club, the Portugal uh, team, it all bodes well. We've really got to go for it. Big teams, big clubs win in Europe. If you think in recent Europe, Liverpool have won in Europe. Why can't we win in Europe? Why are we always step Europe? Yes, we do need to win in Europe. The last time. I'm Arsenal won a European trophy and I was fortunate enough to interview the man who scored that wonderful goal hmm. in uh, in Copenhagen. He even reflects on it as one of the best goals of his career and what it achieved for Arsenal football. To you that might not remember, we came up against the Palmer side that had knocked out um, Ajax and Ben. Some, uh, some really, really good sides. You know, Broly, Nasplia, Nebula, Scala. And we did it all the time. Arsenal. It's the only time in my lifetime I've seen Arsenal win in Europe the Arsenal mm. way. A few years later, because it was so special. And uh, I hope that we can galvanise this time. And people talk about Champions League. We've spoken privately as well, Alex. Are we ready for Champions League football? Yeah. No. 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 But no. people want Champions League. Now, the Champions League football. Why do, they, why do they want Champions League football to, to be in pot four, to struggle to get out of matches, saying uh, uh, older Champions League uh, hymns on? I, I've been a veteran of national games from Amsterdam in the, in the last 11 seasons, and I've seen a dynamic change where it's no longer about the belonging. It's about the, the every single game I get to go to, win, lose or draw, 
is a massive privilege. To attend 50 Arsenal games from Amsterdam. I think in particular, uh, Blaylim Shamali, the veteran Swiss um, set piece taker and midfielder, is very. He's got a mean free kick on him, and I think uh, we have to be wary of him taking free kicks in particular. Actually, driving force from the midfield. I think the manager Franco Fodo as well. I think he, um, I think he was quite unlucky with Austria, and I think he's found his place at Zurich. I think those two in particular will have an out. Come on, on the game in in St Gallen, even though we're playing playing in uh, against FC. Yeah. <laughs> All right. I, I think what we're going to do, we'll, 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 you know, we'll, we'll quit while we're ahead. I think maybe there's a lot of problems, at least over here. It's raining. There's been some thunder storms over here in the UK. Um, but look out for for this one. We're going to be doing this regular spot now, James and myself, just updating the action in Europa League. Let's see yeah. how far Arsenal can can get this time round. Let's see how far they can get. We um, will be pre Alex and I will be previewing all six Europa League games. I myself, uh, both home games against uh, Bodo Klimt and uh, FC Zurich. Game here in Benevolence in Eindhoven. Eindhoven is only two hours on the train from uh, from Amsterdam, and uh, due to PSV in London, obviously living in the Netherlands to, to fly back to London for that uh, of an oversight. So that's why I chose uh, Schurich and Blow Photo Glimpse. But um, if you have any questions in general, also touching on different, different interviews that I've had through the years with uh, players, clubs, and obviously my 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 network of um, dealing with professional footballers and uh, um, World Football Index and also for the Secret Footballer website. You know, it's uh, six years of um, hope will pay off one day. But uh, I get a lot of people trying to say to me, Alex, about coming on YouTube. But I try to view Dutch players and managers in their mother tongue and Spanish players and managers in their mother tongue. You, you need to have the, uh, the the maturity to go away and make sure that you, you do the... Mm. I know an awful lot, but of course, the timing is everything to give people... An example. I remember Sunday Elise, who played for yes. Nigeria, Dortmund, and Ajax. Well, I was fortunate enough in twenty, and uh, he was telling me about his uh, um, former player at Ashidi passed on, and he was saying so strong, and even when he kicked the ball, he would the ball would make it was just even the way he would kick the ball, and I took it upon myself when away. When I went away from that, to look and discover where Rashid Yakini actually played, and he played for Gijon. It's nice to put these things in the written piece because, for all I know, his, his brother, his sister, his loved one, people realize and learn something about him. I think in the current day where you have talking about um, European football and uh, giving um, life. I've flogged from the command of the local language. I think it must be quite a hollow experience. And from my mm. blown up, it is that it's amazing uh, to stand in a football stadium and have it around you can be quite lonely. And it's mm. about, about what goes on the pitch as well. Different clubs and different fans, they're not so much open to, to fans coming in selfie sticks and, yeah. and becoming like the second coming when you've got to respect um, ethos and clubs uh, fans groups have been set up and, and end and that's something that needs to be respected um, James I was going to say just uh, you know uh, sorry wrap this up um, is there any way that somebody can get hold of you or I know you're not prevalent on, on social media as much as you was before but no and i'm happy to give the mm. i'm happy to give why alex i have absolutely nothing to hide um mm. i had a twitter thing of uh around reasonable and respectable but one thing that was driving me around the bending me do lally was i would have um i would receive overture 
course from and media employees at professional football clubs who would ask me for my network and the personal number of this player and, and that player and, and I'm, I would give and if I had their job Alex I wouldn't have to approach strangers on Twitter if I would, yeah. I would just have to pick up my phone log in and look at my network which is literally from Graham Potter to, from, to Jamie Carragher to Viv Anderson to Ricky Van Rollerswinkel and a country where when you congratulate them on reaching the national team squad they remember who you were enough to receive a message from Beth Mead when she won the Euros and I'd interviewed her three and a half years before to show how important your reputation is but, but what I found quite difficult Alex is that you know I'm working for uh, on the media side of a professional football club and uh, I found it quite difficult to get hold of me then they yeah. can't they can't misuse it in any way uh, people can get in touch with me on the, uh, my LinkedIn page sitting in the old uh, Sporting Lisbon uh, Sporting Club and Portal Seats <laughs> and you'll see about being an um, um, interviewer of um, professional football club achieved in that respect so um, yeah people can contact me via brilliant brilliant well listen james uh, i want to say you know it's good to see you back on the channel really really good to see you my friend thank you thank and, you for having uh, me the technological uh problems that we might have had i hope the content was good and people enjoyed it yeah i would caps yeah. on for any questions for speaking next uh tuesday about uh, P uh P and um yeah look looking forward to uh giving the uh, People all the info about um, uh, an inexperienced manager in the Luz van Nistelrooy. Obviously, the anecdotes of Bobby Robson, touching on a, a few anecdotes and having spoken to the players who played under Sir Bobby Robson when he was at the next week's show in particular. Brilliant. Fantastic. Anyhow, so, so, so that is it. Uh, we shall see you um, this time next week for some more insightfulness on a Europa League action uh, this season. Let's see how uh, the Arsenal and uh, Mikel Arteta can do. Anyhow, um, this has been Canon Fodder, the channel for Arsenal fans all over this world.